one source of truth. We need to go and investigate a few different sources of truth before we go out and say, okay, this is something that I stand by. Because as we have seen in the space, if the project goes down, who is the first one that gets impacted? The person who stood for the project, right? Well, well, first of all, uh, I got to say, I, I wasn't uh, aware that, that Carrie was going to join in the debate. Uh, so I want to clarify the audience. I am a neutral party. I do have a relationship with BitBoy that goes by very, very far. But for this, I'm being neutral. So it, BitBoy, you are by yourself now versus uh, two, two opinions. But now, what does, uh, what's the duty of an influencer or an educator, don't like the term, but whatever, uh, educator to their audience? Well, first of all, I, I, do you guys know what's really cringe to me? Like, what's really cringe is the people who think the word influencer is cringe. Like, it's so unbelievably stupid. Like, what? because Kim Kardashian is an influencer, nobody wants to be one. Well, guys, 87% of kids growing up today want to be influencers. So I, I, I love the word, I love what he said there about the word educator. I certainly like, I prefer to be called a content creator or a business owner or entrepreneur or a YouTuber. Influencer doesn't bother me though. I think the people that love to complain about that, like they're losers. Like it's so unbelievably stupid to me. So I just wanna, I just wanna say that. Like if you don't like the word influencer, I'm sorry, I think you're a loser. So uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of kidding, but I'm, I'm really not. I just think like, we got to get over this. This is an evolution of where we've come in the world to 87% of kids want to be influencers. Do you know the number one job kids want? YouTuber. Number two, social media influencer. Because there's even more people that want to be in, uh, YouTubers uh, than just influencers. If you're a YouTuber, you are by nature an influencer. If you're an influencer, you're not necessarily a YouTuber. I hope that makes sense. My 11 year old son just started his YouTube channel. Uh, and he's killing it. I don't know if you guys have seen it. It's called All Madden Sports. He, he, his name is Madden, and he likes to do sports content. And all of his friends are like, will you please give me a shout out? He's got like 600 followers, you know? And like, they're dying. One of, uh, one of my stepdad's, uh, basically a cousin, one of his cousins through marriage, uh, he's like nine, and my son gave him a shout out on a YouTube video, and the the mom recorded his reaction. 600 subscribers now, this is not a big channel. And he was like, oh my gosh, somebody mentioned me on, a real YouTuber mentioned me. So like, guys, you have to understand we're in a changing world. Like, this is not the world of your parents and your grandparents. Um, you know, th this is a world today that is changing, constantly evolving. So I, I wanna say that it's very important to understand wh where we're going in the world. There's only going to be more influencing. Uh, Influencing will go long after Kim Kardashian is irrelevant, right? So the, the fact is, and I would say, like, look, I mean, a lot of us are turning into journalists. We're turning into the real media, uh, which is also another really interesting aspect. So what is our responsibility? Well, number one, you have a responsibility to your audience uh, to do due diligence, to, to want the best for them. But it's also balanced out by you have to make income to be able to do this, guys. Like I'm at a place now where I don't have to do sponsored videos. Um, we're doing some, we've reintroduced some sponsored partners, like some exchanges and some stuff, some, some uh, corporate sponsors. We're trying to get like monster energy drink and stuff like that. What's that? Web, yeah, web two sponsors. But the reason why we're doing that is I've got 50 employees and we're trying not to be like cracking and laying people off in a bear market. So uh, we're, I'm very fortunate to where like, I don't have to make money uh, the way that a lot of people who are just breaking into this space, how they have to make money. Guys, sponsored videos and getting income in when you're working 60 to 80 hours. I worked 20 hours, my wife will tell you this is 100% true. In 2020, from January 1st until September of that year, I worked on average 18 to 20 hour days while I built, while I built this. I was tired of being a loser and not having growth. And I, I was, in 2019, I almost quit. January 2020, uh, I was, this close to going and doing roofing. This close, okay? Everything blew up that year, but I put so much time and energy into doing that. Like, maybe I deserve to get paid. Maybe I deserve to have money because of the stuff that I was providing to my audience. However, this is a new and emerging space. So like, let me, I wanna go back to due diligence here. 
a lot of people would look and they would say, oh, because everybody knows the famous video that I did that everybody crushes me over, which is the PAMP video. Uh, we, we were very animated. I'm very animated. I don't know if you can tell. So like very enthusiastic. It was a good project. We were paid for that video. Okay. They literally changed their smart contract the day the video came out. They were literally planning to scam me and scam my audience from day one. We did the due diligence and they had an audit. Did anybody know that a project could change their smart contract from an audit the day a video comes out? How many of y'all would have known that? Yeah, hardly anybody. Like three of you raised your hand. Three of you, right? I didn't know that. I'm not a developer. I'm not a smart, I'm not a smart contract developer. But what happened is, is when that occurred, we now took that new information in and going forward, we knew that that was an option and we knew to watch out for that. And in addition to that, from that video forward, we never did an anonymous project again because we realized all the anonymous projects were scams pretty much, or 99% of them. And so even in doing due diligence, you can do the best you can do. We turned down 99.5% of projects that came out, came at us during 2020 and 2021. A very small percentage met our due diligence standards. And even within that, we still came into some that turned out to be scams that are completely embarrassing for my record. And I hate, right? So the, in an emerging space, you learn new information and you move forward and you take it in for the future. What that has led me to realize is we shouldn't be doing token and coin promotion videos, period. We shouldn't be doing NFT promotion videos, period. Why? These are based on speculative prices. Guys, this is something that will get your audience in trouble and you will end up regretting like I do. And I don't want other people to be in that same spot going through, everybody knows I'm the most criticized person in the entire space. For, for some reason, I don't know why, I don't know if it's my face, if it's punchable or something, or if it's cringe that I'm an influencer, right? Uh, but, but the fact is, I get so criticized for stuff, but we always try to grow and mature and learn, and we're at a place now where we think we've got closure on what's good and what's not good. But look at all the due diligence that was done by Graham Stephan and Andre Gic and Meet Kevin and Kevin O'Leary when it came to FTX. You can still do all the due diligence, but all the information is not known in an emerging space like this. So we have, to, to sum up this question, I just really want to hit that due diligence point so much because people are going to attack me and say, we didn't do due diligence on stuff. No, we did the best that we could. I have an entire research team. He knows my head researcher works for Adam. He has been on my team for longer than anybody. He's learned how to vet projects extremely well. But even he, there's stuff that these projects learn. There's so much darkness and shadow and manipulation in the background of this stuff. When it comes to these teams, when it comes to the developers, when it comes to the serial scammers, the serial rug pullers, that's what needs to be exposed. And it's hard to expose because they do it in the background in an anonymous way and you can't tell who they are. So the, the, the most important thing is responsibility to your audience. And when, I would just say this, when you are doing anything that makes money for your channel, you need to be looking forward and you need to be saying like, is this something that I will regret one day? Or are there some black swan type events around this that could get me in trouble? And when you think about that, well, a black swan by nature, you don't know. But like, if you look at Celsius or you're a promoting exchange, like we have an exchange partner now, BitGet. We always tell our audience like, hey, centralized exchanges still are, are a necessary eel for liquidity. This is the exchange that we think is good, but still don't keep all your money on there. Like still going overboard with, with that kind of stuff. Don't tap me out, Adam. I need that, need that mic back. So, so to, to wrap that up uh, from my understanding, um, so the normal audience, they're gonna find their way to YouTube eventually. It's just the normal, normal human process right now with smartphones being mass adopted, everyone having them, people going to Google for things, and when they can't figure out, they go to YouTube to, to watch it, they're gonna get there eventually. And that's how mass adoption happens. Now, in, in that regard, you have some people who have dedicated their lives to educating the masses, educating the normal human beings of the world, your average Joes. And uh, that's how mass adoption happens. But some of the problems that they're facing is, it is an emerging space. I mean, no one, the year NFT was 2021. Most people didn't know that there was NFTs as existed in 2017. Uh, metaverse are coming, DAOs are out there. It's an emerging space and mistakes happen. You have to, the argument here is it happens. You have to forgive and let them evolve and share those secrets of how it happened, be transparent of how the scam happened or how the mistake happened so everyone can evolve and learn so it doesn't happen again. But what can happen is just canceling 
that educator. He he appeals to a wider wider audience. And what's happening is every time an educator talks about anything, they're accused of being a shill. Every time they're accused of being a shill, you shill Celsius. Well, we didn't know Celsius was a, a scam. You shilled FTT. What's the coin for FTX? FTT. FTT. Well, I thought it had some promise, and FTX went bye bye. Um, whenever you accuse them of being a shill, you hurt mass adoption because you're saying, hey, you need to quit. You made a mistake. You need to stop now. But if everyone just stops at their mistake, all the educators are gone. They don't evolve. BitBoy here in particular, some of the others, have put a lot of time and effort into developing studios, studios with employees that have work schedules. And that comes over time. If he had quit at, in 2020 or after his first mistake, that studio never would have happened. The vetting team never would have happened. The skills that go to other YouTubers to help them not make the same mistakes to the rest of the world, the average Joe's of the world. My mother, my mailman can come to, to YouTube or TikTok, wherever, and learn how, how to get into cryptocurrency wouldn't have happened. So when we just accuse them of shilling every time they talk about a token that happens to, you know, explode, you're actually hurting mass adoption. So in that regard, what do you think about calling people shills when people make mistakes when, when, when influencers do take on a project that ends up, you know, deteriorating over time, what should they do? What is your opinion? Should they just be called a shill or cancel? Should they keep working through her? What should happen? So, I love to ask questions as you guys have figured out. How many of you here have an NFT project? Quite a few folks. How many of you have been approached by influencers who are like, hey, we want to talk about your project and let's take this to the moon? Many. How many of you, how many of those influencers asked you questions about your project? No one? Just one person? When we're saying influencers are educators, that's in the NFT space today, what we're seeing is a repeat of what happened in 2016, 17, and what happened at the peak of the bull market again. We keep repeating the same mistakes over and over and over again. The NFT scams, it rose by a glorious 175% from 2020 to 2021. More than 1 billion was swindled in crypto scams, and this is FTC data. Out of that, over 100 million was because of NFTs. People rock pulling projects. How many of you here have an Azuki or you know about the Azuki story? Many folks, right? And this is a guy who has been scamming people over and over and over again. When you are an influencer, my thought is that you have a voice that the average person can connect with. Let me ask you one question, right? How many of you here are investing in crypto? and NFTs, many people. How many of you use NFTs and crypto, or let's just say crypto, right, for day-to-day -day transactions? A few folks. What was Bitcoin's promise, the first white paper? To replace traditional finance by NFTs. Even now, when we, because we are talking about shilling, we are talking about promoting something, the only thing that we're focused on is you are investing in a high risk asset and this asset could grow overnight. We are not thinking about people who are sitting in Africa, in some of the most corrupt countries in the world, where DeFi could actually topple over their centralized finances. Where, uh, how much is the average annual income of the poorest country in the world? The average per capita GDP less than $300, $270 for Burundi. And there are over 24 countries in the world that where the annual, where the average citizen makes under $1,000 per year. Talk about onboarding those people to decentralize finance so they can break from the corrupt governments that control the entire flow of money. If we are bringing them here and they end up getting scammed, they lose their livelihoods. They don't lose the money that they're investing in. NFTs are being advertised as investment vehicles. NFTs are not investment vehicles. We all know that. And you know when the influencers come to you? The only question, the only, a lot of the influencers who have approached us, and I'm sure a lot of people in the audience would resonate, the only due diligence they do is, can you pay me a ETH or two ETH? I don't think those are real influencers. <laughs> right? 
I do think influencers, we are people and we make mistakes. And we should be forgiven for those mistakes. We get wrapped up into a project that we are passionate about and we can be fooled yes. as well. Yes. And so when so we come out about that and we say we made this mistake and this is what we learned, mm -hmm. I think that shows humility and I think it shows that you are here for your audience. Snaps. Absolutely. I agree with that.